So the AUMA and the AMSC are both solution-focused organizations, We've, and we have been exploring solutions to Alberta's pressing municipal water and wastewater system challenges. First of all, I'll be discussing some of the provincial initiatives around water conservation. The government of Alberta implemented the Water for Life strategy to provide a framework for water governance. One of the key points is water conservation. And to support the Water for Life strategy and water conservation aspect, the Alberta Water Council identified conservation and efficiency and productivity planning as a key activity and that municipalities were a priority sector to develop these co conservation, efficiency, and productivity, otherwise known as CEP plans. And the CEP plan development received support from Alberta Environment, now Alberta, Alberta Environment and Water, in the form of secondment and funding for piloting. In response to this, encouraging water stewardship was identified as a strategic initiative by the AUMA board, and we developed a CEP planning process for Alberta, for AUMA member municipalities. Some aspects is to develop a CEP plan report water use data through Alberta Environment's water use, reporting, water use reporting system, which is otherwise known as WERS, and that's only for municipalities that have water systems, and conduct water audits and identify ways to reduce leaks. But it must be noticed that ultimately, it will take the participation of many stakeholders to implement the Water for Life strategy and promote water conservation. As noted before, the municipalities face a number of challenges managing these water resources, which range from rising costs of maintaining municipal water systems, increasing drinking water and wastewater regulations, a shortage of skilled operators, degradation of the aquatic ecosystems, and limited access to water allocations, particularly in southern Alberta. Because of these challenges, the AUMA developed a water primer and discussion paper to help educate stakeholders. So this document attempts to provide the background information necessary for informed decision making, but it does not provide what recommendations. Hopefully this will form the basis of a water policy that the AUMA will develop. And also we hope it serves for a catalyst for discussion about the broader issues among a you may members and other partners. So we're, so we're trying to bring everyone up to the same level so we can have an informed discussion on these important water issues. And we ask questions in the document to hopefully make municipal officials and other individuals think about their water systems. Topics covered in this document include the global Canadian provincial water context, water governance, the water for light strategy and what it means for Alberta and municipalities, regulations and drinking water quality safety plans, water operators, regional systems, healthy aquatic ecosystems, and wastewater regulations. The water primer is just the first step though. Over the next year, AUMA will engage its members in discussions about how municipalities can address water issues, and this will be done through policies, programs, and business services, and other things such as webinars and communiques. The next major water pilot we're initiating is the Water Initiative, which is, a wa which is an AMSC-led water loss control service. The objective of the AMSC Water Initiative is to provide cost-effective water loss control strategies to reduce municipal water loss to economic and acceptable levels. The Water Initiative hopefully would strengthen municipal water systems, infrastructure, reduce operating costs, and promote asset management. This water initiative will be focused specifically at small and medium municipalities. Currently, a business case is being developed to provide water audits and associated services. And one of the big drivers behind this is we want to create Alberta-based solution to some of these water problems. So the next steps is to create and maintain a water database for all water systems in Alberta, uh, provide a comprehensive and provide a comprehensive business services, completing water audits and loss control, and provide and hopefully provide other services such as water billing, system repairs and maintenance, billing software and meter data management, metering technical support and bulk purchasing, and watering. Ideally, the water initial pilot projects will begin next year 
and at this stage we need to identify potential candidates for the pilot projects and collect feedback from municipalities on the initiative. So if anyone has comments or questions, it'd be much appreciated. Thank you. I'm a professor at the University of Alberta, and I'm the director of the Alberta Center for Sustainable Rural Communities, which is an initiative that was started uh, a short number of years ago to really capitalize upon and operationalize the university's commitment to rural engagement and to actually do something rather than just having it as two words and a bunch of documents. And as part of that then, we are really the mechanism, although well, there are plenty of other ones through departments, that is intended to link and connect to small rural communities, not just in Alberta, but in fact across Western Canada, across Canada where appropriate, and even internationally where appropriate. And we do so under a broader framework of four key activity areas. These are research, as might be expected for a university, knowledge transfer and translation, that is moving research into the hands of practitioners and end users, education, contributing to educational programming, either in a conventional sense through the delivery of courses or contributing to the design and delivery of courses, as well as some less conventional work undertaken in the form of experiential and place-based learning and internships. And lastly, doing all of these activities in a larger model of partnership and collaboration. I, we do not work alone, we work with and for, and I'm actually mandated to work with rural communities um, very broadly defined. We essentially identify the rural, without getting into the stats can definition of, in this province, anything outside of Edmonton and Calgary. So within that context then, one of the areas that has emerged over the last few years, and my background is as a political scientist and an environmental policy analyst um, who's been working in water and water policy and wetland management from a number of different contexts for the last few years. So I come at this broader topic both as a researcher and in terms of the activities of the center is first of all to point to the increasing recognition and importance from both the research community and uh, the various policy communities and networks that are, are present and relevant, including the AMA and others, of course, this one as well, uh, as to the critical nature of water more broadly in this province and the multiple pressures and demands that are being placed upon water as a natural resource that is essential not only for human life and human health and well-being, but also increasingly being called upon for industrial and economic development, for urban and uh, suburban growth, and naturally, especially in southern Alberta, for irrigation purposes. So we have multiple pressures upon a resource that is, as I said before, critical for human life, critical for what we see as a developmental path for our society and for our province and its prosperity, and a resource that is under pressure from both natural and human um, factors, thus creating, as many of us doubtless know, a very complex question in terms of management, in terms of research, in terms of practice, and in terms of issues of both supply and quality. In keeping with that, the, uh, the ACSRC has identified water as one of three priority areas as it moves forward in its work. And this is a result not only of the work that we've done with the Watershed Planning and Advisory Councils in the province and of the capacity and the work that is present within the University of Alberta, but also because we are actually being told from various sectors that water needs to be considered and framed in light of just how critical it really is. And the fact that there are pressures, particularly in rural Alberta and in rural Canada, which we've been discussing here this morning, that are perhaps a little bit too late coming to the table. And what this means is from a standpoint of the center and the work that we do, what is being discussed today is in no, by no means unique issues of demographic change, of aging, of retirement, right, of sitting now on the bubble of what is uh, probably going to be about, about a 19-year phase um, of retirement and a significant shift in sort of the demography of Canada in particular, um, compounded by issues such as the rural brain drain and the loss of youth and issues around the recruitment and retention of youth. The issues that are being discussed here and that are extremely relevant to the progression of water and wastewater management and operations apply across many, many different sectors. So you're not alone in this regard, which is probably small consolation, right? Everybody has the same set of problems. But it also means that there are more and more people who are directing their attention collectively to some of the broader policy questions and management questions 
and the dynamics around even how to intervene, either from the private sector or the public sector, in terms of the not directly related questions, which in turn then spill over into issues such as housing. How can public policy from a non-environmental standpoint contribute to capacity and the challenges faced in capacity in terms of water and water operators? So you're actually starting to now see different silos or sectors of government, in principle at least, starting to talk about where the opportunities may lie to engage in what is termed intersectoral action. The goal being to obtain double or triple dividends that public policy and research is part of this is not simply attempting to resolve one problem because when we do so, we often create more problems as the law of unanticipated consequences, which some of you might be familiar with, but that by collaborating and linking, if not explicitly trying to program across multiple sectors, such as, for example, housing, economic development, planning, water, infrastructure, education, and so forth, that we can start to take a more nuanced and practical approach to a reality which is one that I term, and I'm not the person who came up with this, um, I think especially applies to water in this province and in Western Canada, which is the fact that we face a wicked problem in this particular context. This is a problem, and water more broadly is a problem because of its variability, because of its complexity, and because of its critical role in A, guaranteeing human life, but B, being a critical part of ecosystems more broadly, we cannot solve a water problem. Right? We can instead only hope to better manage the issues that emerge from variability in supply, variability in quality, variability in demand, and the subsequent sort of compounding factors such as demographic change, people leaving rural communities, difficulties in attracting both younger people and then keeping them there once they're there, which means we're looking at a much more complex uh, and multi-layer, multi-level set of dynamics. And being aware of this and even being willing to discuss from a policy standpoint and from a research standpoint how to think across multiple layers and multiple levels is a critical component to moving forward in this management question. In keeping with this and as an acknowledgement of this complexity, um, I am also in a position today to inform you that the University of Alberta has identified water very broadly as a presidential priority. It is in the process, depending on who you ask, it either is or it's becoming one of the key and lead issues that the University of Alberta is seeking to uh, basically embrace and embody as it develops as a major post-secondary institution. And to do so not alone, there are 21 other public post-secondary institutions in the province uh, and through networks such as the ARDN, and Paul Watson is here from the ARDN, you'll hear from him later, that's a shameless plug for Paul. Um, no pressure, Paul. <laughs> to be able to move post-secondary education, research, knowledge transfer, and partnerships forward in recognition of the fact that water, from the highest levels of public policy, regulatory policy, down to the day-to-day -day operations and management in the smallest communities, um, in, the small, in the most remote areas of the province, is a critical area. And it has relevance, not just in the province, but nationally and, in fact, globally and the university seeks to become a leader in partnership with many, many other sectors, including industry, environment, policy, and the health sector in identifying and working collaboratively to better understand and manage the questions that are faced in the broader context of water um, today and moving forward as this province hopefully continues to grow. So with that in mind, what I think is important to acknowledge as well is that there is a broader national context that is relevant to this, that these questions are not just isolated to Alberta. And in, there is, in fact, interest from other provinces, from northern BC, from Saskatchewan, from Manitoba, and from the United States in developing and contributing to the knowledge base, to the planning, to the knowledge transfer that is sharing the knowledge and experiences that lead to better and best practices. Um, where appropriate, of course, for geographic and other reasons, in a way that actually starts to speak to a sort of a super-regional context for water, watershed management, water policy, programming, and the administration of water in, in systems of multi-level governance. The University of Alberta is seeking to position itself with its partners as part of that and to bring research, 
and knowledge transfer capacity to its partners in a partnership model. This is not a classic didactic or educational model of person at a podium telling everybody else what to do and what to think, but rather to try to engage in a collaborative management approach that draws from multiple sectors, speaks across multiple policy domains, and contributes to the provision and the security of a critical, if not the most critical, natural resource uh, in the country. Thank you very much. We're a provincial not-for-profit organization. We've been incorporated in Alberta since 1987, but uh, our members um, who are the um, Community Adult Learning Councils have been around since um, 1970s who are mandated by the province of Alberta to um, uh, meet the uh, adult learning needs in their communities. And we are primarily funded by uh, advanced education and technology, and we are a recognized um, uh, um, entity in the advanced education and technology policy, and there is uh, uh, some talks around uh, moving that further into legislation, be, be, being included in the legislation um, representing uh, community-based uh, learning. Uh, we are um, part of the system of uh, Campus Alberta. Uh, some of you may or may not know. Um, Campus Alberta is a strategy from the Alberta government to really promote coordination uh, among the um, post-secondary um, institutions and other learning and lit uh, literacy organizations across the province. And the strategy is um, uh, based on the approach of being learner-centric, so um, ensuring that the accessibility is, is enhanced and that affordability to education and uh, um, lifelong learning is, is uh, uh, um, uh, does take place. So as I mentioned, uh, we are a network. We are a network of the community adult learning councils and the four focus areas within those councils uh, are uh, ESL, um, English as a Second Language, um, Adult Basic Literacy. So our focus is adult population, so any anybody above age um, 16. Um, and because our business is lifelong learning, um, the courses that, that are offered at the, um, at, at the councils, and there are about 80 of them, and, and they change from, from, from time to time, but right now there are 80 uh, councils across the province, and each council may um, serve a number of communities, so, so we, we may very well be serving um, you know, a, a few hundred uh, communities across the province. So we, we've got a very strong presence in the um, uh, rural Alberta. We have two types of councils, uh, one who are engaged more in the programming and, 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 and the services in their communities, and that's the majority, but we have about uh, 10 to 13 um, granting councils that don't offer programs, but they offer uh, grants to um, organizations in, in the community, especially in the urban, orga um, urban areas where um, um, the uh, calls for proposals are, are um, posted and organizations apply to deliver um, uh, learning uh, opportunities in, um, in the communities. Our business is lifelong learning and continuous learning, and, and, and uh, as, as you may know, um, uh, uh, continuous learning has been identified as one of the nine essential skills uh, by the federal government, so there has been a lot of um, attention um, to this issue because it is um, it is a societal issue. Um, you know, literacy is is a huge part of it. And and when when we talk about literacy, we talk about the the broader definition of literacy, and it goes beyond reading and writing. It's it's more you know health literacy, computer literacy, uh, comprehending, articulating, working in a in a team environment. What makes um, the community based learning, and especially the um, the CALCs, uh, which which are uh, w which is our network, uh, the community adult learning councils, and I refer to them as as CALC, is that we are very flexible and have a broad mandate. So that that puts us in a in a very un unique situation. 
when there is a need in the community, we're able to respond to it pretty much um, right away because uh, we don't have to go through you know layers of of, uh, of, of approvals. And be, because of the, the the broad mandate, we're able to offer a number of um, um, le learning opportunities. Um, and I. I'll clarify here is that uh, a lot of the courses that are offered in the calcs are are short term and non credit uh, but part of our, our mandate is that we we create learning pathways if I were to summarize uh, what the um, the uh, calcs are I see them as as edu uh, education hubs in, in the communities because um, those um, calcs e exist in communities where there uh, there is you know the there may be a library, a library which is, you know, um, a, f a few kilometers away. There are uh, colleges that are, you know, further away. So we we are embedded in the community. Um, we know the community well. The community knows us. So so it has become sort of uh, um, um, a, a center where where people will come for um, any reason and and, and get um, um, referral. Rural communities are changing. Um, we talked about how there is the workforce um, a challenge. The young people are leaving um, rural communities, and you know we we end up with ad adult population. And so so that's that whole idea of lifelong learning and continuous learning will be important to sort of s sustain those communities. But I think beside the challenges, there are also opportunities. Now we see. Uh, you know, immigration, for example, is spreading to um, rural communities, whether it's the uh, temporary foreign workers or whether it's it's, it's economic class uh, immigrants uh, buying businesses there. So I, I see a lot of opportunities um, there for us as well to to consider, and w which is why we have a strong uh, um, uh, f focus uh, as well on ESL and uh, adult basic literacy. Thank you very much. I'm going to tell you a little bit about us and uh, what we do, and uh, hopefully we'll figure out some ways that uh, we can help you over the medium, short, medium, and long term. Uh, what I really came for today, though, was uh, listen and learn. Uh, it's not my area of expertise. I don't know that I know a great deal about wastewater or wastewater management. Uh, so, so it's been a very enlightening experience for me to be here so far today. What the RDN is, is we're the creation of Alberta's 21 publicly funded, publicly governed uh, colleges, universities, and technical institutes, so the post-secondary institutions. We've been funded by uh, Rural Alberta's Development Fund, and we've been funded to use the combined expertise of Alberta's post-secondary institutions to support rural development in Alberta and help, commu and help rural communities grow. The way that we kind of do this is that we're actually, we work through our membership, so we provide uh, funding to our members to undertake various projects and we facilitate them working with each other and with rural communities to develop research projects that provide tangible benefits to communities. So in a nutshell, we're trying to get the system as a whole to work together and to work together for the benefit of rural Alberta. The other piece in this that's a little bit unique about us is we're also trying to get communities involved in projects from the very beginning till the very end. So they're, they're part of designing the project, they're part of understanding the analysis of the project and, and uh, so forth. Um, so we have a number of objectives. One is to facilitate strategic research on issues affecting rural communities, and we do this through collaboration, again, between our institutions and, and communities. Work with communities to identify their needs. So we do needs assessment in communities. We've done some of that work, and that's, uh, that continues to be ongoing. And also, we're partly about identifying gaps in training and education, and, and one of the nice things about being here today is I've seen some identified here as well, in, in the sense that it seems hard to get education when, where, how, um, uh, when, where, and how you want it in, in this industry. So, so uh, in, in a nutshell, what we really try to do is, is connect people um, and, and to help develop solutions to problems. We do that through two primary mechanisms. One is through what we call networking, which is we actually have financial supports to bring people together. And as I said, all our financial supports flow through our post-secondary members. Um, and we also do this through research as well. So we actually uh, financially support some research questions as well. And we have a couple of projects uh, ongoing right now in, in wastewater. Some of you will be familiar with the uh, Alberta Rural Organic Waste Energy Network, uh, otherwise known as ARWIN. And so we're supporting re research on that. It's about growing biomass for wastewater remediation. So they're using willow plantations as opposed to, build, as opposed to building lagoons. 
And this uh, December 1st, we're actually supporting a meeting where they're going to get people together to share best information practices, protocols, um, and, and, more, and more. So another project we're looking at, that, that's one that was applied for by Grand Prairie Regional College. McEwen also is involved in a water project with us, and that was decomposition of the purification uh, products used to treat uh, water. So apparently, some of them are actually quite toxic when they when they when they uh, when they decompose into their into their byproducts. This is kind of like methyl alcohol, right? It's not the methyl alcohol that kills you if you happen to drink methanol. It's actually when it breaks down, those things are toxic to you. So, and we also have a couple of water projects more on the environmental side with uh, Lars Hallstrom, who you saw this morning here talk, and they're working in conjunction with Nate, uh, Deborah Webb, and Laurie Halderson. So. We are supporting a number of we are supporting a number of research research initiatives in this area. Um, so one of the things I noticed this morning was that uh, you know the the working group sessions as I was looking over what they were about last night, uh, and some of the material presented today you know answer questions or pose questions that can be answered by research. Uh, you know Darcy McDonald when he talked about uh, recruitment and retention, you know those are all research questions that you know we could apply research to and perhaps come up with some answers in that. Um, you know, the, the working group session actually also says, you know, what is, what's going to be, how are we going to do workforce renewal? We're going to get to that shortly. And, you know, I did a very quick scan of some of the literature, and one of the things I found, St. John's Newfoundland is facing all the same problems you are, and, they're, and they're, they've got some solutions in place. You know, the Water Environment Federation, uh, which I gather is out of the States, but is a somewhat global organization from my understanding of it, uh, sees this as a widespread problem and they're trying to address it too. So there is knowledge and best practices coming from other places and part of research is addressing that. So in a nutshell, you know, ARDN wants to help mobilize the innovation capacity of our members to, to help with these problems, workforce renewal and other wastewater related issues. And you know, our membership is here quite a bit today because, uh, you know, Darren here is from Nate and Nate is one of our members, Darcy. Uh, Phil Chatters from Norquest College. Uh, Olds College was invited Guy Harms from uh, Portage College, Grand Prairie Regional College, Lethbridge College. So these are all members of ours. They're here and they want to help and, and they have enormous capacity to be of assistance in both the research and education components. So, you know, uh, and they'd like, they, they want to be part of the solution. So a um, couple other things that we do that have been talked about. Um, one that we're keen on doing is post-project evaluation. So once you've done something and you've tried and implemented some sort of pilot project, Evaluating what came out of it is always a good thing to do, and we're actually quite happy to help with that sort of thing. So in fact, we're actually in interdependent on each other rather than saying it's something that we should support rural communities out of some sense of charity. We're actually interdependent with communities, right? I mean, those communities provide us with food, with water, uh, with raw materials for manufacture and more, right? So, so this isn't, uh, so there's lots of good reasons just on that basis, on economic basis alone, for us supporting rural communities. You know, again, I'm not speaking for the government on this by any stretch. They, they have their own things that they can discuss, but uh, that, that's a fairly easy one. Uh, beyond that, I think there's also issues surrounding the quality of life that we have in Alberta. Um, vast open spaces are quite frankly open to exploitation. So we actually want people to live in rural, in rural communities and in rural environments simply because somebody needs to be there to keep a half an eye on what's going on. 